it's like animals are teachers and they, they come into your life to teach you a lesson. They're profound teachers and they're so deeply connected to the spirit, to the love and to goodness. And, and they want you to be happy and they don't want you to hold back and they don't want you to suffer. And then don't want you to be in a relationship you're not happy or they don't want you to hold back if you like somebody and, and you're just scared to, to get in. You know, they do want you to take to the next level where you are striving. So one area where I use it a lot, the animal communication, is uh, end-of-life transition. Because I find it's really important to let people know what the animal is actually thinking about whether it's time to go or not. So a lot of people suffer with that decision-making, okay, when is it time to go? And, and there's a huge pressure in this country to end the life when it becomes at all uncomfortable. We're not used to being around old and sick and dying. It's kind of hidden from society. It's considered cruel to let your pet die a natural death if they are debilitated. However, whenever I tune into animal that the owner is considering to put down, none of them are willing to die. And I've seen, you know, the really sick animals that, you know, by the Western standards would be considered like very good candidate for euthanasia, you know, maybe they they can get up or they cannot eat, or maybe they have ongoing illness that makes them suffer. However, they still want to take that next breath. If they can take the next breath, they would rather do it than die. It's, it's, um, so I want to give that permission to the people that want to go ahead and let their pet, you know, complete their journey naturally to tell them that's okay. They're not being cruel. And, um, if they feel conflicted about euthanasia, it's probably because it doesn't feel right internally. You know, if you get to the point where it feels like a good decision, it's probably is. If it doesn't feel like a good decision, probably isn't. So um, just discard anybody else's opinion about how things should be done and just trust yourself. I've had owners that went through the whole journey with a pet, like not eating for a whole month. And dying, you know, like in their hands, looking in their eyes, it was extremely profound, beautiful spiritual experience. And it would not have been that way if the dog would just put down, you know, it would be like a quicker transition against the animal's will. Like I do believe they have a right to complete their journey on their own. One time I had a case when I was called for the house call euthanasia for a cat that was a 17 year old cat, emaciated, just skin and bones, seizuring. Um, and it's, it recently broke his leg, you know, had a violent seizure, hit the steps, you know, has this broken leg. The owner says, okay, maybe, you know, it's time for euthanasia. I come in and the cat is purring. The cat is just purring, purring, purring and like rubbing me and like showing me so much how he wants to live that I told them, well, I cannot put the cat down. He wants to live. And, uh, and I didn't, and I told her how to do the pain management and seizure control and how to stabilize the leg. And she called me a few months later and said, hey, he's doing better. She's so glad she didn't put him down. She, he actually starts feeling better. Um, so this end-of-life transition, you know, having somebody that can tune in with your pet is very helpful because it's such a – or having a supportive attorney and they can guide you step-by-step step through that process is very, very helpful. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think when I was – a kid, I always thought if I had a superpower, I'd want it to be animal communication because you know, now it would make my my job so much easier to be able to just ask them how they feel or, you know, where does it hurt? Well, we all have that capacity, you know, we, it, it just the ability. It's like a, it's like a learning how to ride the bike. You just get it. So the key is you have to be still enough to hear that. So the first is stillness. So if somebody wants to start learning it, I would say start meditating and calm in your mind and then staying calm in the presence of the animal. So once you're calm enough, you're inevitably going to start picking up those informations. And the second step is believing. So if you hear something, you don't know how to explain it, start writing it down. And start carefully asking the owners or, or seeing yourself in your workup if it actually adds up. So that, uh, And the more you practice, the more confident you're going to get. Um, I just recently found out there's actually the technique that um, teaches you to be a psychic. I, was, you know, I thought it just like spontaneously happened to people. But there was this man named Jose Silva 
uh, that developed uh, mind control methods. Maybe you've heard of it. Um, it's on the Mind Valley, so it's a it's a it's a method of putting yourself in a meditative state through the body relaxation, where you're relaxed enough that you access in this like su- you know subconscious states of mind in which you're seeing those. Um, you know, in which you're developing the psychic abilities. You start seeing with your psychic brain. So he trained thousands of people. Um, the way, you know, they worked, you know, first they put their, their um, trainees into this relaxed state, and then they tell them the name and the age of the person and where they live. And the person, you know, starts describing, you know, the physical conditions. So it, it's possible, it's trainable. Uh, it would... Imagine how easy the diagnostics are, right? When the pet comes in, you just...